This is where Peter got the call that changed his life. Yeah, that's right. It was exactly here. By the way, this is Peter Schreier, designer. Peter's an automobile designer. Some call him an artist, some even call him a visionary. Just call me Peter. These are Peter's glasses, this is Peter's outfit, this is Peter's very comfortable chair at home, but he doesn't sit on it. And this is Peter's daily inspiration. Peter's trusty pencil. This is Peter doodling with his trusty pencil and his daily inspiration. This is Peter's favourite art form. Da -da. This is Peter holding, well, reading the new book about his life and impressive career. This is Peter's Casa Kukum. Not many people know this, but he makes a killer cheesecake. And this was the first car Peter designed. Okay, now let's go back to that life-changing phone call. It was an invitation to come to Korea to design for Kia. It was almost as if a portal had opened into a completely new world. Peter sees opportunities as doors, one open door could lead to another. This was going to be interesting. Even more interesting, Peter also became the chief design officer of Hyundai and Genesis. Peter not only changed the car designs, but also broke down the hierarchies and created cultural change with one simple question. What do you think about this? This question was asked of each designer and it created an inspiring working atmosphere. Throughout his career, Peter was the mastermind behind many cars. The Hyundai Tucson, the Kia Sportage, the Volkswagen New Beetle, the Genesis G70, 80 and 90, the Kia Nero, the Kia Optima Line and... The Kia Sorento. Oh yeah, the uh, Kia Sorento, the Audi TT, the Volkswagen Golf 4 and the Kia Picanto. What I love most is watching people in their cars that I designed. Since Peter was involved with more than 150 cars, it's quite a lot of people. And I see them every day, everywhere I go. Peter loves jazz. One could even say his design studio operates like a jazz band. Because Peter believes designers are just like jazz musicians, as a design develops, they will introduce new ideas. Just like a jam session. Peter's always thinking about new shapes, always looking at his surroundings. Peter says ideas are everywhere. Peter thinks it's important to never lose sight of the initial idea. After all, everything begins with a sketch, Peter says. Keep the big picture in your head somehow. Then intuition will show the way. And it did. The Golden Honorary Steering Wheel Award, the Lifetime Design Achievement Award, the Grand Prix de Design at the Festival Automobile International of Paris. Honorary Doctorate from the Royal College of Art. The title of Person of the Year by Motor Trend in 2020. And the best gem cheesecake in the world. No. Anyway, Peter believes that future designers should keep in mind just three things. One. Let your gut feeling speak. Two. It's all about taste. Three. When you receive the call, you better be ready. And Peter forgot to say something. Thanks for watching. Thanks to you, Peter. This is where it happened. 
This is where Peter got the call that changed his life. Yeah, that's right, because it's exactly here. By the way, this is Peter Schreier designer. Peter's an ultimate uh, as an artist. Some call him an artist, some even call him a visionary. That's going to Peter. These are Peter's glasses, this is Peter's outfit, this is Peter's very comfortable chair at home, but he doesn't sit on it. And this is Peter's thin inspiration. Peter's trusty pencil. This is Peter doodling with his trusty pencil and his daily inspiration. This is Peter's favourite art form. Sada. This is Peter holding, well, reading the new book about his life and impressive career. This is Peter's Casa Kuka. Not many people know this, but he makes a killer cheesecake. And this was the first car Peter designed. This is where it happened. This is where Peter got the cool look from the paper. Yeah, that's right, you have to check through here. I know how to get to the fair design. Peter's an excellent little designer. Some call him an artist, some as a singer and a visionary. That's from the Peter. This is Peter's outfit, this is Peter's very comfortable chair at home. This is where it happened. This is where Peter took up the cool and Yeah, that's right, because he checked you here. Oh, this is this Peter Schreiner designer. Right. This is where it happened. This is where he took up the call that changed his life. Yeah, that's right, because he's actually here. Oh, no.
하나, 둘, 셋, 넷, 다섯, 여섯. They changed the whole system, but mm -hmm. it's good to go now. So I'm going to reinstall the microphone. Okay. The mic works. I'm looking forward to your photos. <laughs> what's what's your name again? Oh, sorry, Kelly. 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 Yeah. Is your mic on right now? Yes. <laughs> I hope it's loud enough. They're playing pink records. Mm -hmm. So, Conwa Con This is where it happened. Yeah, that's right. It's exactly here. By the way, I think I go home. <laughs> Oh, it's just like they keep it in the car. 
저거로 바꾸신 거 아니죠? 오늘 서울대학교 건축학과에서 주최하는 피터 슈라이어 누군지 다 아시고 오셨을 거로 생각을 합니다. 로션 강의로 오신 여러분들 환영합니다. 저는 건축학과 학과장 서현입니다. 제가 해야 될 일은 되게 간단하죠. 밖에서 오래 기다리시느라고 힘드셨는데 와서 지금 칙칙거리고 있는데 잠깐 시간을 보내면서 마음의 준비를 좀 하게 시간을 좀 살짝 끄는 그런 정도가 제 역할일 것 같은데요. 음, 개인적인 얘기 잠깐 할게요. 제가 이제 고등학교 다닐 때부터 독일 음악을 좋아했는데 그 중에 이제 성악, 독일 성악을 리트라고 하잖아요. 근데 독일 리트를 부르는 성악가들이 예를 들면 뭐 디트리, 디트리 피셔 디스카우, 헤르만 프라이, 그리고 피터 슈라이어 이런 사람들이 있었어요. 저는 피터 슈라이어는 당연히 테너 가수로만 알고 있었습니다. 근데 어느 날 저희 딸이 음악교에 갔는데 녀석은 베토벤, 뭐, 뭐 슈베르트 이런 데안 관심 없고 오로지 그 당시에 있는 원어원에만 관심 있었어요. 이 친구가 갑자기 아빠한테 오더니 아빠, 피터 슈라이어라고 하러? 라고 하는 거예요. 저는 당연히 테러 가수로 생각을 했죠. 그래서 아 이게 가정교육이 중요하구나. 맨날 아빠가 이 독일 리트 들으니까 드디어 우리 딸도 히터 슈라이어를 알게 되고 클래식 음악을 입문을 하는구나. 라고 생각을 했는데 이게 아빠 그거 아니고 자동차 디자이너 하는 거예요. 그래서 제가 그때 이 이름을 진짜 처음 들었죠. 근데 아빠가 해야 될 일은 뭐냐면 어 딸이 자동차 디자인에 관심이 있으면 뭐책 사주고 잘해봐라 하는 거기 때문에 제가 그 당시 무슨 책, 자동차 디자인을 하는 책을 몇 권을 두꺼운 걸 사가지고 다른 데 줬어요. 그때 깨달은 게 하나 있습니다. 건축 책도 비싼데 자동차 디자인 차도 엄청 비싸구나. 어, 이거 오케이, 알았어. 근데 저희 딸은 이제 그 직후 자동차 디자인에 관한 관심을 급속히 잃고 인문대 학교로, 인문대로 진학을 했는데 저는 뭐 그냥 그렇구나 하고 있었어요. 그러다가 갑자기 어느 날 신문을 보는데 바로 오늘의 제목인 디자인 너머라는 책이 출간이 되었다. 그걸 보고 저는 아 이걸 살까 말까 고민을 했죠. 왜냐하면 이 책도 무작위 비쌀 것이다. 건축 책이면 사야 되는데 제가 살 리가 없죠. 그래서 작전을 어떻게 짰느냐. 서울대학교 도서관에서 이걸 구매를 할 텐데 그때까지 기다려 보겠다. 그래서 이제 수시로 서울대학교 도서관에 들어가 가지고 이제 검색을 하죠. 디자인 너머 나왔나. 그런데 놀랍게. 서울대학교 중앙도서관과 함께 몇 개의 단과대학 도서관 있잖아요. 가장 먼저 이 책을 구매해서 쟁여놓은 도서관이 수입과 대학 도서관이었습니다. 그래서 제가 즉시 가가지고 그 책을 봐서 이제 어, 이렇게 했는데 지금도 풀리지 않는 수수께끼예요. 도대체 
왜 수입과 대학 도서관에서 이 자동차 디자이너에 관한 책을 샀을까? 제가 잠정적으로 가지고 있는 생각은 분명히 수의대 선생님들은 자동차를 말이나 소위 한 종류로 알고 있는 게 아닐까라는 생각입니다. 뭐 어찌 됐든 저는 오늘 그 덕분에 알게 됐던 피터 슈라이를 여기서 만나게 해서 대단히 영광스럽게 생각을 하고요. 그리고 이 자리 중간에 이제 중계해 주신 분이 저희 최춘은 교수신데 최춘은 교수 덕분에 이렇게 앞에 나와가지고 흥미로운 이야기를 할수 있게 돼서 영광스럽습니다. 아까 얘기할 그냥 자기를 피터라고 불러달라고 했기 때문에 피터, 웰컴, 앤, 땡큐. 그리고 그가 누구인지는 우리 현대자동차의 홍래옥 상무님께서 좀더 자세히 설명을 해주시겠습니다. 홍래옥 상무님 나오실 때더큰 박수로 환영해 주시기 바랍니다. 감사합니다. 네, 많이 기다려주셨, 어, 기다리셨을 텐데 짧게 인사드리겠습니다. 저는 현대자동차 지금 디자인센터에서 어, 매니지먼트 실장 역할을 담당하고 있는 홍력 상무라고 합니다. 어, 저는 디자이너는 아니고요. 저는 디자인센터에서 어, 어떤 프로젝트 관리, HR, 뭐 투자 이런 부분을 담당하고 있고 마찬가지로 저희 피터 슈라이어 사장님을 어, 업무를 제가 지금 보조를 하고 있습니다. 어, 피터 사장님은 뭐 워낙에 유명한 디자인이 디자이너시기도 하면서 또 항상 이 젊은 우리 신진 디자이너들 그리고 또어 젊은 그 우리 학생분들하고의 교류라든가 그 커뮤니케이션을 굉장히 좀 많이 희망을 하고 계시 어 계시고 그런 부분에 대한 사업을 좀 적극적으로 이렇게 하시려고 하세요. 그래서 이번에 어 독일에 계시다가 되게 오랜만에 한국을 방문하셨는데 꼭 이렇게 서울대에서 방, 어, 한번 강연을 하고 싶다라는 그런 어, 바람이 있으셨고 서울대 측에서 어, 이번에 건축가 쪽에서 많이 도와주셔가지고 이런 기회가 된것 같습니다. 어, 저는 그냥 간단하게 안내를 드릴 거고요. 어, 제가 어, 사실 어제 이제 다른 이제 곳에서도 이제 그 사장님하고 강연 진행하고 왔는데 어, 하나 그냥 부탁드리고 싶은 것은 캐주얼하게 생각해 주세요. 어제도 되게 이제 많은 학생분들이 캐주얼하게 질문도 많이 주시고 나오셔서 같이 사진도 찍으시고 어 좀뭐 필요한 거 있으면 그냥 개인적으로 와서 궁금해한 거 물어보시고 좀 사인해 주시면서 기분 좋으시면 스케치도 해주세요. 그래서 이제 그런 것들 좀 자연스럽게 그 하셔도 된다라는 안내 말씀 드리려고 나왔습니다. 강의 도중에는 저희 디자이너 분들이 워낙에 좀 예민하시거든요. 그러니까 핸드폰은 전부 무음으로 좀 해주시고 저희 피터 사장님 앞으로 모시도록 하겠습니다. 네, 저희 현대자동차 디자인 공은 피터 슈라이어 사장님 네, 소개해 드리겠습니다. I have visited uh, uh, SNU once before, quite some time ago, and it was, uh, they were doing a, um, a video for the German TV, I remember. Um, yeah, I hope uh, you enjoyed uh, the video which has played. I, um, I wanted to show this in the beginning because design is... Um, something that has to do also um, with soft power. It's a, it's a soft power, so it's not so rational like many other um, disciplines. And also I think it's important to um, understand that uh, we are very passionate as designers and also you always need a little bit of a twinkle in the eye and humor when you, when you do something. This is the best way how Things, uh, sometimes you, you invent things. And uh, today I would like to talk about, like the title of the um, uh, lecture is My Roots and the Wings. This is the, uh, uh, the title that also the book has. Um, so it's a, it comes from a, 
a quote from the German poet uh, Johann Wolfgang von Goethe, who says, you, you should give your children, you supply, supply them with roots, but also give them wings. Um, I would also like to, like to talk about uh, cultural change and uh, my experience about coming to Korea and having this very positive culture shock um, when I first came here. And I repeatedly experienced. And also I want to talk a bit about the power of design and how important design is and which new opportunities we are facing. Everybody knows this bottle, and I don't know if you all know who designed it. Um, this was a famous American designer I once uh, had the honor to meet uh, himself many years ago, Raymond Louis. He um, was the one who invented the streamline design, and also he was working together, together with uh, John F. Kennedy, and he asked Kennedy, um, what shall I do? And Kennedy said, let's design the United States. Um, and he also even designed Air Force One. So Raymond Louis, when I met him, uh, was it very interesting to talk to him. And one of the things that he says is uh, about the importance of ed education in design. It's about intuition but he believes the most in educated intuition. And this is why you're here for. I know that uh, the Korean government is very visionary by really supporting the arts and supporting design, uh, uh, supporting uh, architecture. I think this is very, very, very good thing to know that uh, the government is actually standing behind this kind of things and be sta standing behind the young generation uh, to drive those innovations. Still, I think that the Korean history and culture and the education are the foundation of the future successes and of the, of the build-up of even more of this uh, design-oriented culture. So, and I know that the SNU has um, many exchange programs and strategic uh, partnerships with other, other universities, also some in um, And it has a partnership even with the University of Art and Design in Offenbach, <clears throat> which is very near our European headquarters, uh, headquarters of Genesis, Hyundai and Kia. Oh, sorry. <coughs> so, the moment, I mean, we were talking about when I got this call and when I came to Korea, it really changed my life uh, was when I came here. And it made me realize how different things are when you change your point of view. And... Uh, my usual, or our usual point of view in Europe, in Germany is, of course, I mean, if you look at the world map, Germany is right in the middle. Um, and this is, you know, we are in the center of the world. Um, and when I came here, and the first time I was in a meeting room, there was a world map, and it was kind of strange to me, because I didn't, I was looking at it and thought, well, what is that? And then I realized that, of course, naturally, here you have Asia, you have Korea in the middle uh, of the world, and Europe is somewhere on the, uh, on the left, on the top, and New York is on the far right. Um, so this, this told me a lesson. And uh, so coming to Korea really opened, opened my eyes. Um, and also, I have been here so long, so often, but it inspires me every time I come and every time I go. I was in Gyeongchu last weekend to look at the, at the king's tombs and all these kind of things. Uh, it's so interesting and you have such a history. It's really, 
really, really interesting to me. And um, also when I came here, I found people with a vision and people who have energy. Um, and I know that you Koreans, you are very ambitious and you learn very fast. And it's interesting. And if you look at uh, a picture that uh, is uh, uh, like taken in Seoul today, um, you see what a vibrant city this is and, and uh, how much there is going on in the total art and design scene, uh, business and everything. Um, and when you look back, you see how far, how fast this has happened, you know, how fast, uh, where are we here? You came, I think this photo was probably taken in, I don't know, in the 60s or so. There's only uh, 50, 60 years from now um, that uh, Korea has uh, developed from a developing country into one of the leading industrial nations. And for me, only when you look back, you realize how fast the country has been developed. So coming here and looking how people live, what, you know, what is this scene, scenery in arts and all these things, I find out that the Korean culture is characterized by contrasts and extremes, by order and chaos, by tradition and progress, but somehow they, they, uh, uh, they melt into each other in a very good way. Um, and these traditional themes are still very prominent in modern art, in crafts, in architecture. And uh, Korea's history and present culture are the foundation for innovation and progress. And uh, this is Korea's soft power. You know, Korea is a global player now in innovative technology, but also in the creative industry. And if you look at K-pop, movies, their fashion, design, car design, of course, um, electronics, um, the Korean wave, Hallyu, this is um, very, very, um, the wave, this wave is going to the world at the moment. And recently I was in London and there is a, an exhibition in the Victorian and Albert Museum about Hallyu. So in Korea, everything wants to be progressive or even revolutionary, including the design, of course. And recently I read, uh, and I don't know if uh, you are, some of you are architects, I have read that um, there is a, a, a museum for uh, a robot, and sci robot and science museum is being built in Seoul. And, it's got to, and I read it's going to be finished in 2024. And this is only built by robots and by artificial intelligence, which I, feel, I find is sensationally interesting. And I hope this was not some fake news because it was in the Korean paper, but I so far have not met anybody who knows about it. Maybe we can talk later about it. And so, some of you know, know about it. So as I said before, before traveling to Korea, I regarded Germany as the center of the world. And uh, I think this was maybe sometimes quite a, doesn't work, what? Okay. Um, I, yeah, this was maybe quite an arrogant kind of attitude that we had. And, uh, but so in Germany and in Europe, we have those companies with a long brand heritage, um, very loyal brand values, uh, restrictive visual formula for the way we do design. And uh, the Germans, it's very uh, technical and uh, technology and engineering driven. This is, this is the passion that, that uh, um, German car makers have. Um, in, so we mainly see how, how fast does this car drive through curves and all, all of this. Um, and in Korea, I have learned this is very, very different, a very different approach. Um, 
the Korean uh, uh, companies, they look closely and only what the customer needs and try to understand the customers better. Um, and I think this is very important because this is, this is the way um, to be successful and uh, to excite people about the products. Um, of course, this technology-driven approach is important too, and I think maybe sometimes the truth is in the middle. Um, so you have here a very young brand heritage. Um, and so this gives room to redefine brand values, to find brand values, and it's more free to experiment because you don't have the burden of, uh, like it's often in, in the European companies where people say, it's always, we have always made it that way, so don't change. Um, so here I found that everybody's very open to revolutionary ideas and changes. And so this uh, progress and entrepreneurship became an important part of the culture. And uh, recently we have introduced uh, the Hyundai, the, the Pony Coupe, which has had disappeared for some reason. And it was rebuilt by Giorgetto Cicciaro, uh, who has actually done this in uh, 1974, I think. Um, and at that time, it was a symbol for innovation and progress. And at that time, already, <clears throat> the leadership of Hyundai had <clears throat> really had this kind of vision already. And I think <clears throat> at the moment, it's really wonderful <clears throat> that um, we think back on what our roots, where does, where does the company come from, what is it built on, and uh, make a new interpretation again of and build on this kind of heritage. And I think uh, only when you know the past, you can understand the present and shape the future. So Korean culture shaped my attitude and philosophies quite a lot. It has also influenced my art and design. Um, so I showed this uh, object at one time at the uh, uh, Guangzhou Design Biennale, and it was also influenced by a Korean, uh, I went to the Suse Won Garden um, to look at this old, uh, the houses that are there that have a square plan shape. And uh, the many hundred years, hundreds of years ago, already they invited poets and other uh, scientists to come there and uh, study in those huts. And so the, the project was to build um, a sculpture that is two by two by two meters, which apparently is the uh, space that a human should take in Korea and it, it should be accessible. So um, I built this uh, sculpture that's now in the Mabuk uh, University of, of Hyundai um, as, a, as an interpretation of this task. And this is our steel, stainless steel tubes as an interpretation for the, interpretation for the bamboo that is in, I found in the Susie Wong Garden. And another uh, project um, was one Biennale later. The motto of the Biennale was design equals design does not equal design. So <clears throat> we put up a, uh, a show, <clears throat> sorry, I somehow Um, we put up an installation behind a very thin a curtain of three cars models uh, to showing to this theme of design equals design does not equal design. It was the, the new uh, Kia Optima that came out at that time, the K5. And we put the polished uh, perfect car in the middle 
and on the one side the Gray model, and on the other side uh, K5 taxi that was, is, you know, taxi is not so attractive, has the small wheels and it's a completely different interpretation of that car uh, than the one that you are buying. Uh, and um, so my experiences in, 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 in the rest of the world and in Korean culture uh, developed for, for me like into a fusion of this kind of impressions. And uh, this fusion of influences, it makes, it, often people ask me, are you doing, you are doing German design, are you? I said, no, um, I have a lot of uh, experience that way and I know, you know how we did it there and what are the philosophies, but I'm, I'm getting so much influenced from uh, uh, the culture in this country uh, that Actually, we have a, a fusion of this kind of impressions in our cars. Um, and this is what makes our cars, or the Hyundai cars, the Kia cars, so special and unique. And no other brand has that. This is something unique. Um, so different cultures inspire and bring surprising reflections sometimes. So let me talk a bit about my, my inspirations. Um, traveling brought me trem a tremendous inspiration and it made me leave my comfort zone. And I think this is very important for all of us, uh, for all of you as well, um, to observe other cultures, other, other markets and respect and learn. Uh, in 1990, I was uh, sent for one year to the California Design Studio of Audi. And this gave me a total new perspective to be there, not as a tourist, but to stay for quite some time and learn about uh, the, the, the things there, the car culture there. Um, and I found out that there is probably things we think we know, but we are not really aware of. So, um, And I think this is why satellite studios and, uh, are quite important. And at that time, we had a project. Um, it was, that was already in 1990 or so. Uh, there was a project the Californian state asked uh, the industry to make a zero emission car. So we did one of our uh, designers there, Craig Duffy, he, he made a, a roadster because uh, we thought, okay, if we do a roadster, it, uh, it's lighter because it only fits two people. And so you have enough, you know, space for the batteries and could be an emotional car. He made this really nice car where you can see the, the sketch up there with uh, nice round fenders and um, a very simple body, the windscreen was here. And so we were quite happy with this uh, 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 with, with, with his design. And so we were discussing, so this was meant to be for Audi, and we were discussing what could we do on the Volkswagen side. And uh, after the Audi impressions that I got when I was already there, I said to Jay Mays, why don't we use this body and we just put a house on it, you know, different upper. And we thought, yeah, of course, a beetle, this is the thing to do. Um, at that time, Volkswagen wasn't very successful in, in, in America. And, uh, but Volkswagen had a very, a, a, a romantic kind of aura to it. The Beetle was the car that uh, parents bought for their kids when they finished high school or something like that. Or some of them maybe had their first kiss in there. Um, so it's, it's, uh, the car uh, was uh, almost like a, uh, how shall I say, like a puppy or something like this. And uh, we were so electrified by the idea that uh, um, a few days later, I, I 
picked somebody up from uh, coming from Germany um, to LA airport and I picked him up in the morning and we drove around um, LA and I showed him Hollywood and you know all this and on this day I counted 51 old Beatles and this showed me how um, what a kind of emotional value this car has there and so the idea was to really make this car um, to bring customers back into the showrooms and it it worked even if we had a lot of resistance from the Volkswagen uh, uh, top management at, at the time um, but this uh, uh, this influence from experiencing this market gave me uh, a paradigm change but I get inspiration also from other things and from a variety of things from art from music from architecture and uh, I do learn a lot I like to do art artistic projects um, and I'm learning a lot from it, it I can draw a lot out of it uh, and also learn from artists what is you know their attitude and their their uh, their philosophies um, so art opens my mind and it inspire, inspires me a lot and to do art makes me free you can see on this picture obviously um, but art is not design and design is not art but yes it is in a way they, somehow there is a lot of overlap and the, uh, and I think there's a lot of influence that can go back and forth. As artists, they raise questions that are critical. And this is, as designers, we need to be sometimes as well. Um, designers, so artists raise questions, designers deliver answers. Um, art is critical, provoking, and design is conceptual and solution-driven. Um, and I think this provocation of art and artists even can bring big corporations and new inspirations and unexpected insights. So this is why uh, also big co uh, corporations more and more work together with artists and take their, their, their inspirations. Another thing that for me is kind of the symbiosis of art and design um, uh, of emotion and rational, um, this is music, and I like jazz music as we've seen in the in the in the, in the on the video, um, and I I've seen many concerts of of Miles Davis, um, uh, and he explored and combined uh, uh, different styles into new styles of music, so he reinvented it constantly. And for me also, with design, like with music, you have also to create a groove that the, the object you are doing somehow has a soul and uh, yeah, a groove to it somehow. Um, and for me also, a design team is like a band. You need this, first of all, you need to be able to improvise. And so not like a classic musicians we are playing from, you know, what somebody else already composed, you have to find something new. And when you play in a band and when you are in a design team, uh, you need this blind understanding. You need, you know, when you play in the band, you need to know when somebody else changes uh, in the, into a different theme or something and you can answer or reply and, and step in again. And for me, it's very, very similar to design and this blind understanding. This is very important. It's something you cannot, you have to naturally, you will, must naturally get to it. And another uh, musician I really admired, and unfortunately, Miles Davis and Frank Zappa really passed away, and some of you probably don't even know them anymore. But still, um, Frank Zappa experimented a lot, but at the same time, um, he, you know, it, it, he put humor and fun into it and provoked a lot. And what is important, he disapproved mediocrity. And this is also something that is important for us designers. Don't just do the mainstream stuff because uh, 
you think that this will be best accepted by marketing and so on. Um, so it's important to not make the mediocre things. And you can use, sometimes you can also use humor. It's like a weapon. And what inspires me really is architecture also. And I think there's many of you that are architects. Um, and architects, architecture is a very human-centered kind of discipline. And this design is the same. Um, and uh, architecture is about um, the package, the plan shapes, but also about the proportion. And it requires an inside-out thinking. And uh, this is um, very important too. It, de uh, uh, it defines a culture statement as well, that uh, the buildings that you build, they will stand there for 100 years. Um, car design is not quite as long uh, living, but still, I think timelessness is quite important. And to me also, if something is timeless, it's more sustainable. So we did one project once, and I want to show you where, uh, that it is important to think about things from the from the inside out. Um, we did we did a project um, for a show car, and um, at that time there was uh, the Toyota IQ. I don't know if some of you remember that car. It was a four seater that was under three meters long, and. Uh, we looked at it and, um, and we realized that you can never, never fit four people in that car, but it was described like that, or was sold like that. Um, and at the same time, it, it was the beginning of the electric era. So we also wanted to do a car that is, it's an electric car but, and with battery, but um, is not as like, Serious, according now we do an electric car. It it should be a fun statement and and have a character. So first of all, we worked on the plans. So if you if you uh, say it has it has the four wheels, and uh, so we thought okay how can we because in an electric car you have more freedom to kind of um, furnish the car compared to a combustion engine because you have no exhaust and no uh, drivetrain uh, transmission all this so we thought okay let's uh, and the car was very small still let's sit three people on a bench So one is in the middle. It's possibly a bit tight, but you don't always have three or four people in the car, but still it offers the possibility. Everybody can stretch their, their legs as much as they want. And we said, okay, the first person, we simply put a jump seat in the back diagonally so the person can sit in the back in di diagonally. And, uh, if you have luggage, you can fold it up and you have a luggage space. So that, that was the idea. Um, and then we can still make it, bring it to that kind of very compact size. And then one of the designers came with a model and he made from from foam, that's just a small model um, that uh, where we said, okay, this is it. It's, it's like a little animal, like a little toy. And uh, it looked like that.
uh, very simple but very um, strong graphic to it. So this, this car um, later was called the Kia Pop, and maybe some of you have seen it on, on a motor show in, in, in uh, some magazine or on the internet. Um, very uh, yeah, nice project. This was the, 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 the foam model. So we, we, made, we did it from the inside out. We wanted to give it some character to make an object. So imagine if this car would like drive around um, like many of them in the city, it's like a landmark and uh, like little animals running around and something you'd love to have. And it was electric. So also here, it has some humor and a twinkle in the eye in it. So I'd like to talk about a bit, a bit about my roots. Um, I think it's so important to be, to be curious and uh, to be open for changes and for new ideas. So my radar is always on when I, no matter where I am, in, in the nature or in, on the street or on a freeway in Los Angeles or on a, one of the winding roads in, in, in the mountains in, in, in Austria or whatever. Um, and this, this, radio, uh, this radar, I cannot even turn off. It's all, it, this is always on. Um, so as a, as a, and this started at a, in a really early age, um, I was fascinated by cars and, and especially by aeroplanes. I love to build and to draw. Um, and um, uh, basically, I wanted always wanted to be a pilot, and then uh, maybe an artist. <laughs> I ended up as a designer, which was good luck. And um, but still, uh, so I, started, I did this this sketch at a very uh, early age, maybe when some of your fathers or grandfathers were born, um, uh, in in 1958. Um, and uh, still I carry this pen everywhere, every day, because I can think creatively. But the pen for me is the connection from the brain to the, to the paper. And by that's like swing, swinging the pen allows me to come to ideas, towards ideas. And also it's uh, for me, uh, rather than explain something on the iPad or whatever, I use it to explain it to the to the designers what I I want to do. So, and by the age of twelve or thirteen, I built this uh, wooden model. At the time, I I was a fan of BMW because my father had one, and uh, uh, so it was a, it's supposed to be a BMW uh, uh, racing car, um, and. This, for me, is like a, a motivational token, like a talisman. I always had it on my desk through my whole career. And I think it's quite interesting to think about what, you know, for every one of us, we all have different backgrounds and different roots. What is your uh, motivational token? What is your talisman that you would carry with you uh, in, in, in your career? 
what is important for you. So somehow lucky I, I came uh, to go to the art school uh, uh, in Munich and um, being there I got an, uh, the possibility to do an internship at Audi. And uh, at that time Audi was a company with a very, uh, say, poor brand image. It was a call for accountants or for, I don't know, for, uh, so I was always praying in the night that my father would never buy an Audi. And uh, I came there and one of the designers brought me in on the first day of my internship and he showed me a, uh, a model, it was a full-size model of the original Quattro. And then he said, this car has four-wheel drive and 220 horsepower, which was a lot at that time. And I thought, man, this is something. And uh, for me, this was the spark where I understood where this company could go. And um, later they had all this uh, rally successes, being a world champion in, in, in rallying, which was totally exciting. And this, this brought this company a lot forward. And uh, at the end of the internship, I was offered a uh, scholarship to the Royal College of Art in London. And to me, this was like winning the lotto. Um, it was great. And uh, you can see this was my graduation project. Um, and pretty soon uh, after, I, I was a uh, designer at Audi. Yeah, that was fantastic. Um, and this was also one of the moments that changed my life. Basically, I have always loved cars and I made my driving license one year earlier than it was legally allowed because I had a special permit because of my father's uh, 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 business. Um, and uh, so I, I, I was able to drive my father's uh, uh, BMW 5 Series, which was a sensational car at that time, and it was pretty fast. Uh, sometimes I exaggerated it too much and I'm lucky that nothing happened. Um, but to drive in the mountains and, and uh, drive this car and other cars on winding roads is like, uh, it's, it's like dancing with a dan dancing partner. And it's, you know, it's a, the way you feel it handles and it accelerates, it looks, um, was just fantastic and uh, also the interior of the car at that time already was fantastic. We were admiring this later in, in when, when, when I was doing uh, interiors. Um, and then I bought a Fiat X19. This is maybe a car none of you knows at all. Uh, it was a car done by Bertone, Italian uh, design house, Italian designer, very famous. And it looked like a show car. It was fantastic. And it had 75 horsepower, but it had the image of a Ferrari when you were on the, on the autobahn and you were, uh, you know, uh, behind another car. They were, went aside immediately because they thought this car is extremely fast. And it was quite fast. So each car has a, a specific uh, a feeling and smell. And this car also inspired me a lot, as well did that car that I still own, it's a Pininfarina Spider. Um, and both of these cars inspire us a lot and inspired me a lot to do this car. That was the first show car we did uh, in my career. And uh, so I went to, my, to our boss at the time and, uh, with my Spider and showed him the car, let him drive and said, this is what we should do at Audi. And uh, finally, the car never saw the daylight, but it was a lot of fun to do it. And it also had a roof that you could take out and make a half convertible out of it. And it was supposed to be an affordable sports car. At, in the beginning, it was orange, and then we were kind of forced to paint it green. I hated it, and then now it's orange again, and it's in the museum. And for me, it is important that a car is a holistic product. Um, 
interior and exterior, they really should complement each other and fit together perfectly, and you, you cannot make it separately, really. Um, of course, the exterior is the master discipline. You know, the exterior, the, the exterior, as an exterior designer, you have the most image. I mean, people ask, who did this car? They always speak about the exterior designer. Um, but um, at the time, I was in exterior design, and uh, I complained to my boss and said, I think the interior they're doing for this Audi 80, I don't like it at all, and said, yeah, then do an interior. So I was in interiors, and I started to really enjoy it, because to do something from the inside out and create a, an environment where people feel well and you have control at that time, of course, it was still important to have this kind of cockpit in the car. Um, and an interior, I think it needs to fit like a glove, and it's about the quality, and but also the, the uh, this feeling you, you want, the feeling of control, but also to be protected. And that interior was the first one that had this kind of line that went all along the dashboard and then into the door to make one kind of space out of it. And. Um, and I think that interior design, for me, and this is what I want to tell you, um, not every one of you needs to be an exterior designer. There are so many other fields in the development of cars, especially now with uh, autonomous driving and other uh, 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 new technologies in the car. It's making it so interesting and so rewarding to work on, interior, on interior. Uh, for me, this was always fantastic. And uh, so this is even getting more important in the future. Um, so I want to talk a bit about the, the power of design uh, and the power of designers. Um, with the creativity that we have, we are able to find hidden patterns and also we can connect uh, seemingly unrelated phenomena, which maybe AI cannot do so nice. And uh, we, have, we do have a broad skill set about aesthetics, of course, marketing, production, engineering, ergonomics, uh, regulations in all kinds of countries, and last not least, also the customers. Um, and this way, we do have an overview of all the things. And from the beginning on, um, the, nobody else can do it but the designer. To, because it's when, you, when you begin to, to make something, this is exactly what you want to come out in the end. And this is, nobody else can do this. Um, so we really have this overview and we connect the dots and create the vision. Um, and this, therefore, also it's important to develop and build uh, a company's spirit and the values. And you need to understand for the company you are working, what's the spirit of Audi or what's the spirit of Hyundai? What's the spirit of Genesis, uh, of Kia? Um, and this is also something that cannot be created by an AI. This is something you have to work and understand and, and uh, discuss together. Um, and so I, uh, I developed a different um, um, philosophies. When I first came to Korea, I brought this uh, sketch to uh, uh, Chairman Oisang Chang <clears throat> and said, I said, it's just one line on it, and I said, the simplicity of the straight line, and this, um, this is what I want to do. Uh, and I think he understood very well what, what I meant. Of course, there is no straight line on a car, but uh, it's about simplicity and clearness. And at the time, it was for Kia, and Kia, for me, even if you, if you think about the name, it sounds so clear and clean. Um, and this is what I wanted to do. Uh, so it's very important to uh, develop this kind of different uh, uh, philosophies. And at one time, we made a manifesto, a manifesto book, uh, 
um, to create a vision, but also a the contrast between what is a Hyundai, what is a Kia at that time. And um, we ended up with two also symbols and tokens that later when I presented it, I gave to all the designers, depending if they were at Kia or Hyundai, a Riverstone or a billiard ball. And uh, we, um, so a Riverstone is a, a natural nature made object and no Riverstone is the same as another one. And this was the symbol for, for Hyundai for us. And uh, the billiard ball would be the symbol for Kia as a um, uh, man-made object that is very precise and very technical, let's say. Um, and we developed also at the time philosophies that counted or should count for the whole company uh, Hyundai as the uh, charismatic leader and Kia as the youthful challenger. A bit later, um, also with the beginning of Genesis, um, I thought about uh, what could Genesis define as a luxury brand and what could be the expression of Genesis. So I was uh, uh, thinking about an archer, you know, the way the posture that an archer makes when, when uh, uh, he's, he's uh, aiming. And um, uh, for me, this has a, it's very athletic, but also a very elegant kind of movement concentrated. And so uh, we, I came to the um, uh, uh, description of having Genesis as being a, a symbol for uh, athletic elegance. And uh, <laughs> um, so now it's not quite valid anymore, but uh, I think I just show you this, this cartoon that I did at one time that with a few lines you can define three companies in a very easy way. So um, when I started at Kia, very often people ask me, okay, you have this logo, this is, is this not old fashioned? And uh, I said, yeah, but uh, it's a fantastic name. And then, then we tried to make different new solutions, even with uh, some uh, symbols, but the symbol would never work because the, there is no background for it. And so uh, a long time later, um, we, when Kia was in changing um, to a, an electric company and we were talking about the relaunch and, and about the uh, dynamic and the and, uh, dynamics of the company and the purity that things have. Um, so we call this dynamic purity and during this workshop we came uh, to the point that if we do a re launch of the brand. This was all developed in design, this idea. We need a new logo. And so we developed the new Kia logo and I quite like it because it's so simple and also it uh, somehow um, reflects uh, Korean-ness in it because it's kind of calligraphic and for me it's always, it, it's like a, like a signature, you know. You do this and this and you have it. Like it's, it's to me, it's like a like a signature, and also that in design we um, it's a it's a part of the whole thing, and uh, I think this is what Aristoteles once said: the whole is greater than the sum of its parts, and this is why it is so important as designers that we always also have the big picture in mind and not only do the one thing that we do at this moment and make a nice line or whatever. So as designers, we have quite a, 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 a big responsibility. Um, the one is, you know, for the joy and the well-being and, and the, uh, for the customers. And the other one is for the company's success. Um, also to secure jobs for the future because good design create sales and this creates a certain security, can create more invest 
And so this is a, a, a circle that's, that starts of a, a kind of spiral. And I want to give you an, an example then where you can calculate, like the Kia Magentis, which was also called Lotse here, is sold about 100,000 times uh, worldwide. And the successor, where we managed to make a car that is um, uh, much more attractive and it turned into a, a, a want-to-buy kind of car and made Kia into a design brand, sold up to 300,000 times. So it tripled uh, the sales and you can, if you calculate the cost of one or the price of one car times 200,000, you can see what kind of dimension this gets. It's the same with the Kia Sportage, that uh, the second generation that was on the street when I started sold 170,000 cars per year. Um, the, the third generation sold already 360,000. And the generation four, 450,000. So design really is a key factor for a company's success. Um, and I mean, I can tell you one anecdote about this car that when we presented it, and it also shows that you have to stay to your, what you're convinced about. We, we, we presented the model and uh, the, one of the, um, um, the head of, uh, the president of uh, Kia in Europe, and in and, and, uh, UK, he said, this car with this front, I cannot sell. This is what, you have to change the front. This is no good. We'll never sell it. Uh, it, it, it won't work. We were convinced that this car was good and uh, we built it the way we wanted it. And even it got a lot of, I know here in Korea, even when it came out, it got a lot of uh, uh, criticism. But in the end, it was the most successful, the most selling Kia of all times. And the funny thing is that uh, a few years later, I got a, a kind of achievement award in England from Autocar. And in the same event, uh, the person who was saying that uh, uh, he will never be able to sell the car, he got an award because he sold so many of them. So that was quite, quite funny for me. Uh, but the most rewarding thing for me uh, is when I see my design on the streets. And I have a story that uh, I once um, uh, experienced that I, uh, I was in uh, some, it was kind of some years ago in an Audi and uh, parked in front of a supermarket in Austria and then a new Golf 4 uh, uh, parked next to me and uh, this car just came out and there was uh, a young lady, she stepped out of the car, she met a friend and said, look what I have got, what I've just got. And this is the, these are the moments and I have experienced this also with many, or there were some cars from, from Kia and Hyundai. This is so nice to experience this and this is why our job is so fantastic because you, you have this kind of things that, that you experience. And it gives you energy and motivation and orientation. And so also you, you have this kind of addiction that with every, every uh, 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 project you do, you want to do even better. Um, so when you, when you do design, the theoretical knowledge and the skill set is not enough. It's about the passion that we have and the vision uh, the team interaction, the enthusiasm, and last not least, uh, the gut feeling. It's, it's important to have this feeling for those things. And, um, and really important is to have fun together in, in the team and then you can make this kind of things. And follow your instinct, instinct and don't play so much on the safe side, like uh, this car would never have come, have come to life if the designer who finally, who did it, uh, would have played it on the safe side. It wouldn't look like that, but it was very successful. And it's, it's a product that has charisma and it inspires people. 
So the sign is really intuitive. It's about gut feeling and you need the antennas. It's a, a, a spiritual process. And this is something you cannot learn. You either have it or not. But this is the power of the sign. So, but my success, the successes I had was not only the skill to draw and to find ideas for, for a cause, uh, it was also the ability to unite and to listen and to cooperate. Um, and I considered everybody in the studio and all in all design centers to be a part of the master plan. Um, and following my nature, and when I first came here, this was quite difficult. I just went to the designers that were working on the model and asked them, you know, and uh, say, what, what is your opinion? What do you think? Uh, and they were kind of ashamed because they are, we are not used to it at all. But I meant I, I wanted to know this guy's opinion. And uh, I totally broke the chain of command. Um, so I went there and then I started to explain them why I would do some things on the model for which reason and what, what effect to have if we change it in this and that way, but let the guy do it. Then it's his design and, uh, or her. And they would understand um, that what they have done as their own project and, you, you, and this kind of things you cannot do by order. You have to do by, by to make them understand. And this made everybody feel involved. Uh, and at one time, uh, I don't, quite some time ago, after, after I started, uh, maybe a year, one and a half years later, um, Chairman Chang, uh, 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 Yes Chang, um, he once complimented me and said, you have changed the culture in design. And I wasn't aware of it because I thought I do it, you know, I act naturally. Um, but ultimately, this had a very positive impact on the entire corporate culture, and you can feel that this is changing now within the company. Um, so all of you have your specific roots and your unique personality and your own vision. And this makes each of you and everybody an important player within the team or uh, within the company where you are in this way to envision a better future. Um, and for me, it's always, it's, it's the interaction with people. This is also why I think home office is a very difficult thing for designers. Um, but still, there is no recipe for a su successful career. You can't really plan it. And uh, some people, they make their way only by pushing others aside, aside and, and work with their elbows uh, and try to push too hard. But this is very risky and it's often they are exposed as imposters or deslers. Uh, for me, first of all, it counts to integrate in a team and just do a good job. Um, and there are so many future, so many challenges coming up for us in the future, which is positive. Um, often people ask me and say, okay, with autonomous driving, we don't need design anymore because the cars will all look the same. Uh, no, uh, it's getting even more challenging and interesting with these technologies um, to find new solutions. Um, and uh, so mobility is changing really substantially. And people are traveling and connecting in new ways and there's new business models. 50% uh, of people in the world live in cities and it will be 70% very soon in 2050. But still also, uh, so we have to find solutions for smart cities, but also smart solutions for the other 30% that are living in rural areas. And this is a very interesting task as well. Um, so we need a creative approach for for both of these issues uh, for, and uh, for infrastructure, for mobility. And uh, so infrastructure, mobility and architecture are getting very close together and are merging. Um, and uh, vehicles will 
need to be considered as part of a more complex system. Um, so, so Hyundai started to develop a UAM and uh, 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 with a network of uh, ground hubs, vertiports. Uh, I think that is crazy, but it's very interesting. Um, and Hyundai really led its way to be from just being a car company to be an in innovation driven company. And uh, robotics, uh, innovative powertrains, digital connectivity, augmented reality, they are uh, also indirectly supporting a sustainable development. And uh, I think that the environment and uh, to care about uh, materials uh, and to care about a circular uh, industry is very, very important. And I think we can only continue the success when we act responsible and also focus on sustainable products. I think this is really, really important. And also as designers we, and architects, we have this uh, uh, big responsibility um, to create things that work from cradle to grave or from cradle to cradle. Um, and it's this disruptive times and it is uh, uh, disruptive thinking. And, um, and I think this is something you have to do here and you should do. Um, and uh, also transforming your ideas into technology innovations, but also together with technology in, into uh, innovative design. Uh, so I know also you have those labs and, um, and it's important also to motivate uh, design in a sustainable way, but also in a human-centered way, beyond just styling and cars. Um, okay, we love new innovative technologies and digital tools, but always remember we design physical products for consumers. And this is why to really also have the hardware there as well, not only uh, the electronic. Because, and I think for me, there's nothing more important still, uh, like a physical model. Some, an interior you can sit in, an exterior you can walk around and, and, and touch. I think this is really important. UX, try it out, try it out in the car not on the computer only, because it's not going to work, it's going to teach you wrong when you drive in that car. Um, this is why physical experience and physical model is so important. Um, and also, if you, think, if you have this kind of approach um, with, a, with a haptic interaction, it, this makes uh, the des design and the products exactly for the consumers who want to use it. And I think it's important, and I did this with every car that I did, I make it in the way that I want to use it, and I want to be proud of it, and I want it to be practical, um, because we are the customers of our own creations. Um, so innovations and new technologies, they are an important part of our lives, but I think when we use them, we find them, we should not only implement them because they are new, they should be implemented when they are meaningful and they, when, when they're improving something. Um, and this is what I always call uh, human-centered design, as uh, already the Bauhaus said, man is the measure of all things. So, and this is great here because uh, uh, the Seoul National University is a, a crossroad of design, architecture, and engineering. It is a fantastic, and art, and this is a fantastic combination. And here still, once you study, you can work unburdened, unburdened by the marketing department and, and others. Uh, use this freedom when you are studying. This is very important. And uh, don't play too much on the safe side, because you think then uh, it's a better way to get a job. 
be provocative and uh, experimental and uh, for the reasons even if they seem crazy and at one time somebody said to me um, or I read somewhere if people say you are not normal you have done something right so I want to end uh, with a saying from uh, Federico Fellini uh, who once said only the visionary is the true realist Thank you. Ne. 자, 좀 이렇게 시간이 길게 진행이 되는데요. 지금부터 어, 자유롭게 좀 뭐, 궁금하신 사항 있으시면 질문을 좀 받아보도록 하겠습니다. 어, 굉장히 좀그 질문 내용이 길거나 어려운 거는 어, 한글로 해주시고요. 간단한 건 영어로 해주시면 <웃음> 네, 제가 설명드려도 되는데 어, 저기 저희 또 농담이고 저희 저 통역분 계시고 하니까 네, 질문은 원하신 대로 네, 편하게 해주시면 될것 같아요. 혹시 뭐 궁금하시거나 질문하시고 싶으신 분 있습니까? 아 네, 저기 뒤에는 남작생 혹시 So uh, I want to be an automobile designer like you, and I'm studying in SNU right now. So I'm studying uh, industrial design and mechanical engineering. But uh, as you know, the opportunities to like have this kind of jobs are like really small. So do you have any advices for SNU students who want to take this role and become an automobile designer? I didn't quite, can, can you say again? I didn't, didn't quite get it. So uh, basically, I, I want to also become an automobile designer. Yeah, yeah. So I'm studying this industrial design right now. And, but uh, the opportunities to become an actual car designer is very small what, from what I know. So do you have any advices or tips for university students who want to become an automobile designer? Um, first of all, in my career, I have met many people who were uh, who studied industrial design and they ended up as fantastic, talented automobile designers. So you, you shouldn't need to worry. But uh, um, of course, you if you want to do this, you, you need to take your antennas out and see, you know, what, what do you want to do? Uh, um, what type of uh, um, uh, skills or background do you have? And uh, so I, is this a bachelor course where you are? Or what? Yeah. Um, and maybe there's a chance to do a master course in another university. I mean, I cannot give you a... Uh, um, I, I'm sure that it, it, there's uh, a good universities here where you can we can do this, and there's some of the designers at, uh, 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 that are in the world, not only at Hyundai, like Sang Yup Lee, who have studied in Korea and they have made uh, uh, great successes. But uh, I think what possibly could be an, a good idea for you to do if you study industrial design here see that maybe you get the chance to go to uh, another school in America, in England, like the Royal College of Art or the Art Center uh, and some other, some other schools in Germany. Um, and uh, so widen your horizon and uh, um, experience another world like I did experience here. Yeah. 
추가적으로 좀더 시즌을 받아들이지 말라는 겁니다. 저희 선배들이 가장 잘 Practical uh, advice: We have great teams at Tande uh, that we hire internship and designer. So uh, these are the programs that I would like to recommend you. So don't think about other brands; just think about Tande. Mm -hmm. um, can I ask a question? Can I ask a question? Yes, yeah, certainly. Um, so I'm a student studying uh, English literature and uh, architecture. Um, so I was wondering um, how should designers oscillate between technology and design? And how does your design specifically um, keep up with the advent of technology? Um, I think this goes hand in hand. This is very important. I also, the, <clears throat> there are some designers that have a, a, a technical background. They have studied uh, uh, a technical, uh, um, uh, they've been in the technical uh, major first and then started design. <clears throat> and I think this, uh, uh, as designers, we are not only um, doing nice design, this is a very deep going uh, 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 process and we have a lot of knowledge and of course, we ha we need to work together very closely with engineering, with electronic engineers, with body engineers, with all kind of 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 of, of uh, uh, technical support, and and uh, this can only be developed together in a good way. So this is not. It was in the old days was this engineers against designers, but this is over with for a long time. And uh, because both want to make a good result in the end. And of course, sometimes there's discussion and friction. And then uh, it's also the uh, art of designers, maybe uh, or the skill to convince the engineers. Hi, th hi, Peter. Thank you very much for a, a fantastic lecture. The, I want to ask a design question specifically to do with the development of um, uh, driverless vehicles. So the driving sensation, the driver is such an integral part of experiencing a car. So if you, once we remove the driving experience, what hap how do you imagine the experience of the car should change how do you how do you, how would you design the interior? I mean, based on what concept? Because at at that point, everybody becomes a passenger, so no, there's no operator involved. And do you do you think it's important to actually have that experience somewhere in the design? Yes, yeah, certainly. Yes, I think you need to experience. I think until everybody in the car becomes a passenger, it will take quite some time still. Um, and there's a, maybe a long way of, of overlap. But of course, you need to put yourself into the situation to understand it, to, to imagine how this is going to work. And um, there's a lot of things to be resolved, uh, and which is not easy. So I ask you, how do you imagine you direct a... Uh, um, autonomous car, how would you do it? So you, you step in the car now. I think the driving experience, the tactility is very important. Sensation of some sort of control yeah. is important. Yeah. Because many people say, yeah, voice activated. But uh, I think this is not so easy also. Even imagine you have a driver and you talk to the driver um, and the driver cannot reply. So this is already difficult enough as between persons to exactly tell where you, what you want. Um, so I, I think there is no problem if you have um, Say you, you, you order an autonomous taxi and say, I want to go uh, to the Grand Hyatt Hotel. It comes in front of the door, you step in, the taxi to the Grand Hyatt Hotel. Easy. 
But if you go on a, uh, say, weekend tour with your autonomous car and you drive through the countryside and then you, you think, ah, there is a, a nice cafe over there. Uh, in, a, in a current car, you would just talk with your friend or your wife or whatever and say, ah, let's try this cafe. Okay, let's go in there. How do you do this with an autonomous car? It's not so easy. Um, and so this kind of feeling, I think, still needs to be there. This, the, the autonomy of the, of, the, of the user also. There's different ways how you park in front of a, or how you pull up in front of somebody's house, depending if you have some bags in the back or if you have uh, kids, if you have uh, maybe your one of your parents who is maybe old and cannot walk properly anymore, you, you always would park in, different, in a different way. And uh, I think this kind of freedom and uh, autonomy of your, the user itself still is very, very important. Would, would there be a race car version or Pardon? a sports version of an autonomous vehicle? I don't, you be, can you say without the microphone? Would there be an, a sports version no, can you do it without the mic? I cannot, I cannot understand it. Would that be a sports version? A sports version. Does it make sense to have a sports version? Yeah, this is the question. What is a, 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 a sports autonomous vehicle? Does it make sense? That's, that's, that's what I meant about driving. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think this is the way we are educated. We, uh, of course, we, we love sports cars. We drive, want to drive fast, but this is, with all this traffic and, and, and speed limits, there is not much left. I think it, sometimes I love all those sports cars and, and uh, I love to drive them. But is this still contemporary? Is, I mean, it's like with horses. The, uh, uh, um, now horses are only used in somewhere in the nature to, 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 to ride around or whatever. Uh, I think that for me personally, I find it a bit hard to say, but what's the point? Except bragging. But I think if you find a, a McLaren in the city of London going you know, uh, through a narrow street. What's the point? I, I feel a bit sorry about it, but this is, this is the, uh, the reality. Yeah. Yeah, yeah this, this uh, um, I think it's a different era. It's, it's, uh, and this is also why I think that still for a long time we will need the control for certain, for certain uh, uh, things. And uh, this enjoyment of driving is fun maybe for all of us, but for the next generation state. I mean, today's kids, many of them, they don't even want to make a driver's license. It's, it's a bit disappointing, but uh, it's a case. And I think um, um, it's still nice to have this kind of toy and these possibilities, as long as it's possible. I, I agree. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> thank you for the inspiring lecture. I actually have a question about the, con uh, the difference between the concept car and the production car. So there always is a uh, change from the concept to when it comes to reality. I think it's the same problem that architects have as well. We draw a very fancy drawing and renderings, but maybe because of a budget, maybe because of a construction process, there's always a compromise. So my question is, when you are actually coming up with uh, your inspiration and your concept car, how much do you think about the production process? I mean, uh, uh, as car designers compared to architects, we have the big advantage 
to make a concept in full size. This is what you can't do, <laughs> it's a bit difficult. Um, and uh, it, there's different processes with different concept cars. Something like, like this one we did without any uh, kind of serious uh, um, feasibility uh, um, research. We just did it and thought, okay, it, it will work. Of course, we have studio engineers that tell us what makes sense and what not, but uh, if you would bring this car into production, it would take uh, uh, quite some changes. And this is what happens when you translate a concept car into production. When you do a concept car, you want to really render the concept in the most uh, spectacular way. So you understand, the, you, you exaggerate, like in a fashion show also, the, the, the things you see at the fashion show, you, can't, you, you don't buy, they, they, are only, they only show the direction. And this is similar with, with a concept car. And, this, and if you made a concept car uh, exactly like the production car is, it would look, it wouldn't be as attractive. And, uh, uh, but still, the concept car brings in the new idea, and it's it's uh, um, uh, you, you can yeah it, it, that's why it's a concept car. Also, sometimes we do concept cars where we already know what the production car is like, and we just disguise it so it's not so obvious. Um, but uh, the, in my career, we have done we have done very many concept cars and. All of them we have done, we have done for a reason, to either introduce a new idea for a type of car or to uh, introduce an idea exactly for the uh, car that we should, we want to do. Um, uh, there's many examples for that. Maybe later if we have time, I can give you some examples also. Thank you. Uh, I'm a huge fan of you since when I was 10. Anyway, I'm studying architecture and urban design, and I know the Hyundai is trying to a lot of architecture and urban things nowadays, like HMG. And very simple question. I, uh, as a fan, I want to know about that. Do you have any plans to design architecture or, or urban things or like UMA things now? What's the question? I give. I have any plans to do architecture? Or? I didn't quite. I think it's very difficult to to understand. I'm sorry. Uh, do you very simple question? Do you uh, do you have any plans to design an architecture or urban things or UMA design? If I have designed anything like this. Uh, yeah. Sorry. So yeah, I've done, uh, for example, the, um, the new uh, smart factory in Singapore that's going to be opened, uh, I think in October or sometime towards the end of the year. The first sketches, um, I, I, did, I did a few sketches for it and uh, a lot of those ideas have been implemented in this, in this, uh, uh, um, in this factory. So, but I do not want uh, to say that I can do architecture. I'm very interested, and I'm very interested in architecture when I say design my own house and I furnish it and all these kind of things, uh, or I alter it. But I think uh, architecture and car design is so far apart that. Um, I also think an architect cannot really build a car. This is yeah, it's the other way around. It's the same thing. But even uh, in Italy, uh, there were no car design courses in the past. All those designers, they, were, they studied architecture. 
and of course you can learn a lot with with architecture like i said before about proportion and all these kind of things Okay. Let's take a photo with you, Professor. Okay.